Hey, hey Centennial. Centennial. I'm Summer. And I'm Ellery. And welcome to episode three of The Rise. This month on The Rise. It's college month, and today is College Focused Friday. Check out the mini college fair during all lunches. Students will have an opportunity to explore various colleges and universities. This is a place where all are welcome, and um, I think that's really needed right now, and you find it here. So Refuge Coffee is a place where of welcome for the community. It's like our little corner of Clarkston where everyone is welcome. Um, we provide job training, training individuals on how to be a barista. Um, giving them an opportunity to learn job skills and people skills. Hi, my name is Jody Richardson and I am the AP Secretary at Centennial High School. My main job is to support the um, administration and assistant principals here at Centennial. I like about Ms. Richardson that she has a positive attitude. Um, she's easy on the eyes, she's sweet, she um, is intelligent, she has a lot of initiative. Um, she feeds me sometimes, she tolerates me, and um, she knows that I'm the best administrator at Centennial. I love the administration and staff as well as all of the students I come in and interaction with. What I like about Ms. Richardson is she's very positive and she's very um, enthusiastic about her job and she's very good at it. I'm very excited to be Employee of the Month. Um, this is the first time I've worked in a school setting, so to be voted Employee of the Month in September um, is a great honor. Attention seniors, do you need to get your senior portrait taken? If so, schedule a session today on store.katystudios.com. The deadline to get photographed is Thursday, December 12th. Please visit the Seniors 2020 Google Classroom for more information on how to schedule a session and for an opportunity to take your portrait at Centennial on Thursday, November 21st. Slowly, 
March for Our Lives is a movement led by individuals that want to change. Their goal is to end the gun violence epidemic that claims nearly 40,000 lives a year and create a safer America. The movement was created by survivors of gun violence. March for Our Lives created a peace plan called Change that's made up of six steps that the next presidential administration and Congress must take to address the national gun violence epidemic. Change the standards of gun ownership, have the rate of gun deaths in 10 years, accountability for the gun lobby and industry, name a director of gun violence prevention, generate community-based solutions, and empower the next generation. Here to talk about how she got into the movement is Arielle Harper. Hi, my name is Arielle. I'm the director for North Georgia March for Our Lives. My role is being in charge of the network of students all across North Georgia. We're in charge of organizing events in high schools, with our registration drives, etc. And basically, we just promote civic engagement in your communities. Working with a group involves a lot of organizing. We mainly focus on civic engagement, youth involvement, and voter registration. So for example, for the event we had in 2018 in Atlanta where over 70,000 people showed up, there were a lot of tasks that we had to take care of beforehand, which included making sure there were enough first aid sections along the route, making sure we knew what our route was, if we had um, public restrooms, where we were gonna stop, where we we're gonna start, what performers are gonna be there exactly how long the march is going to take and basically ensuring that everything runs as smooth as it can. I got involved after hearing about the shooting in Parkland and I helped organize the walk out here at Centennial and from there on I went on to organize a bunch of other events with the organization and later formed a chapter of my own. So when I first found out about it there was definitely a sense of urgency and from there on I was just inspired and wanted to be engaged in, in politics and activism to you know, ensure that we as students have a better life, communities have a better life, and gun violence isn't an issue anymore. So being in March for Our Lives has definitely opened a lot of doors for me. I've gotten to travel pretty much all over the country, which is pretty incredible, and I'm super grateful for that. And I've gotten to see what it's like inside policy making, inside lawmaking, what exactly goes down in, in the House of Representatives, what goes down in the Senate, and exactly what our lawmakers are doing and if they're doing anything for that matter and if what they're doing is effective in, in protecting their communities. So students at Centennial should definitely get involved with the organization. If you look on all our social medias at MFO Georgia on all pages, you can see exactly how and where to get involved. Uh, the organization is a wonderful organization. It's nonpartisan, meaning anyone of any political affiliation can join. Uh, the goal of the movement is just to end gun violence and bring our communities together. So I started fencing in ninth grade year, um, that's when I really got into it. I came during club day when they were showing the eighth graders around and I think that's when I first fell in love with the sport. My motivation for fencing is really to be the best me I can be and I apply that to multiple aspects of my life. It's more than just like the comical stabbing each other. It's really, it's a really fun activity to go to and also to support your friends in it as well. It's an individual sport, but it's also a team event. And so when you're fencing, you get the adrenaline rush throughout the bout, and that's really exciting. But it also feels really good when you have like a group of people who are behind you supporting you. To me, fencing is a team activity, and it means dedication, practice, using their skills, and really honing them in to 
be the best you. Fencing has its cliches like every sport. Most people think that we just show up and we get on this really hot suit and we stab each other, but there are a couple misconceptions. So fencing is actually a relatively safe sport. Um, you are There are a bunch of layers that you wear and the blade is actually, it has a little tip on the end. We practice on Mondays and Wednesdays. Mondays are conditioning um, and Wednesdays are blade practice. We are one of the best high school fencing teams um, in our area. At every tournament, we have had Centennial Fencers go into the finalists. At our last tournament, we brought home five out of the eight medals. At the tournament before that, we brought home four out of the eight medals. So we are a good team. I chose to become a scout because my brother was first in it and he kind of paved the way for me to become a scout and go on to my path to get my eagle rank. Some ways that I've been able to give back to the community is doing different service projects um, such as environmental um, based and community based. So I volunteer at the soup kitchen, um, I've, clean, I've cleaned up campgrounds, I volunteer at the Chattahoochee Nature Center and we clean up the grounds there. And then also we do things like food can drives and things like that. So to me, service means giving up my time even when there's no initial benefit for it. So Service is really important because it teaches you core values about what you have and what other people really don't have. By giving back to your community, you learn more not just about yourself, but about what you can do to help others. You should do service not because you're told to or because it fills a requirement, but because you want to benefit your community. Hey everyone, my name is John Atkinson and I'm a senior here at Centennial High School. I'm working towards the highest rank in Boy Scouts, which is Eagle Scout rank, and I just turned in my final project. You're about to see a preview for it. Go check it out on Centennial Knights Film YouTube channel. Hello, my name is Anthony Newbold and I'm the principal at Centennial High School. Hi, my name is Lori Henry and I'm the mayor of Roswell, Georgia. I'm Dr. Sabra Katzweiss. I'm an assistant professor in adolescent medicine at Boston Children's Hospital. My name is Erica Greenblatt. I am the director of development for the ADL Southeast region. I am a senior lecturer in the Africana Studies Department at University of Massachusetts, Boston. I am a lawyer. I have a master's degree in English. They still treat uh, black people as if they're non-persons. You say we do not associate with you kind of people. Oftentimes I see we're all put under a stereotype. Mentioning people that I knew that were a part of the LGBT and bashing them and then bashing me. She had a student play Hitler. She had some students play Nazi. Now this is a group of 10 year olds. It's just not good for the the intercommunication between di different cultural groups. I think as a community, we need to support each other, help each other, and better ourselves. The personality counts, not just the person or how they look. We have to raise questions of everyone and everywhere, and then we'll deduct and we'll start to find solutions to how we need to continue to change in order to be better people and live in a better society. In that environment, it's much more inclusive, and you don't see other people as alien. Hey, you know why bicycles have kickstands? Why? Because they're too tired.
Next Friday on November 1st, Centennial's Yearbook is holding a Pajama Day fundraiser. It's $5 to participate, and you'll get a stamp to show you've paid. Show out in your comfiest pajamas next Friday to help support Centennial's Yearbook. Coming up next. Dual enrollment is an opportunity to simultaneously earn high school credits and college credits while enrolled as a Centennial High School student. This means that for every grade earned as a dual enrolled student, that grade will show up on your Centennial High School transcript and your college transcript. College can be incredibly expensive. The class is costing upwards of $3,000 per semester. Dual enrollment helps reduce class costs by offering classes absolutely free. Who can participate? You can participate. 9th through 12th grade students are eligible for dual enrollment participation. However, colleges may still independently set their admission standards, meaning you have to be a junior or a senior to enroll. For more information about college-specific admission requirements, please visit the CHS Counseling website. Successful dual enrollment students are self-motivated, independent, self-advocates, organized, and remarkably studious. For more detailed information, please join the Dual Enrollment Remind by texting Knights DE to 81010 or see Ms. Ekpo in the counseling office. Hi Christian, this is uh, Dr. Harper from the vet's office. I'm just calling to inform you that unfortunately, Roxy didn't make it through the surgery this afternoon. The injuries sustained in the crash were far too severe. I'm truly sorry for your loss. A free game of cards. Who are you? I don't answer stupid questions. I won't. You know why you're here. You know about Roxy? Of course I do, Christian. Everything you need to know is in these cards. All 52 represent a week in the year, an event in your life, something that's going to happen, and I have the power to control that. So you can help me? Well, Christian, it's actually not that easy. What do you mean? What do I have to do? You see, Christian, if you want to bring your dog back, something else has to replace that event in time. And that, my friend, is out of your control. What do you mean, out of my control? Make the right decision, won't you? I'll make a decision. It could be good, or it could be bad. But it's out of your hands. So you're saying the cars control my life? Just answer the question, Christian. So if, say, someone else had the cars, they can control my life? Christian, can we just finish this off? That's a lot of power, don't you think? Christian! Fine. I just want to get your Roxy back. Finally. Now make your choice. How, how did you... I called you bluff. Are you planning on taking the ACT? A mock test is a great way to practice without the pressure of an official score. The mock ACT test will be offered here at Centennial on Saturday, November 2nd. Register at appleruth.com with the code below. See Ms. Roop in the counseling office if you have any questions. Falling down is a part of life, but it's how we get back up that defines who we really are. Blaze Sports America is an organization that has helped many individuals find their way back up. Ninth grader Colin Lancaster is one of them. With Blaze's help, he has overcome his limitations. When I was five, I was in a car wreck. I was in the hospital for six to eight weeks. And so at age six, we got involved with Blaze Sports. I grew up playing sports before the accident, but ever since then, I just love it with the people and everybody I meet from all around. It's just been great. There's so many new kids and we all enjoy it. We're all each other's family with Blaze. And so that's been great for it. 
for all of us. Blaze Sports is a legacy organization from the 1996 Paralympic Games. We've been around for around 23 years now, and we serve youth and veterans with physical disabilities, and giving them Paralympic sport opportunities. I work with Blaze because they actually practice here at Centennial High School, where I'm the head track coach, uh, and they were looking for a coach. And I'd heard of Blaze, I knew what they did, and I thought what they did was just an incredible program. I've always been inspired by people that overcome obstacles in their lives, and Blaze was a perfect fit. So Blaze Sports has impacted the community in many ways, uh, whether it be through fundraising or giving youth or veterans that you know access to sport. You know, sport and physical activity is so important for everyone. You know, just because you have a disability does not mean you can't be active and you can't engage in, in competitive sport. So just like Colin said, we're a family. Blaze Sports is a family, and that's what we offer. With Blaze, Colin has come so far since the accident. With track in the past nine years, um, I've competed in junior nationals. Every year it gets better. Um, I've broken a few national records in the field and the discus and the javelin. And then this past year I was selected to go to Switzerland for Team USA as part of the Junior World Championships. Um, I was one of 20 kids out of the country selected. Since being founded, Blaze has actively been involved in many events around the state of Georgia. Sunday was the Atlanta Track Club's 10 mile race. Uh, it's part of Atlanta Track Club's community give back. So what they do is they allow charitable organizations to sponsor a cheer zone. The Track Club makes a donation to that organization. Despite his limitation, Colin still has a positive outlook on being an athlete. It's no different. You can do it. You're still an, I mean, you can still be an athlete. You can still do it. It may be a little different, but it's still the same thing, same team. And Blaze is one of those things that I've found that the more I give to Blaze, the more I get back. It, it, it's one of the most re rewarding things in my life. For CSPN Live, this is Max Oglesby reporting. It's senior night here at the Fortress. It's the last home game of the season. Come out and support our seniors. Hope to see you there. Go, Go Knights! Hi, my name is Ethan Romali. And I'm Michael Wilkerson. And today, we're bringing you the best and the worst parts of the MLB postseason. Let's get into it. In the first wildcard game, the Rays beat the A's 5-1, sending the Rays straight to the ALDS. In wildcard game two, the Nationals beat the Brewers 4-3 in a thrilling matchup. Wide drive, base hit to right! Battle score one, battle score two as the ball gets away from Fisherman right. That's going to score three runs! Hung up, they tag him out, but nobody in this joint cares. First NLDS matchup was the Braves versus the Cardinals, and well, we don't really have to talk about what happened there. In the second NLDS game, the Nationals beat the Dodgers in a five-game thrilling series. So we got a fly ball, center field deep. Bellinger going back to the warning track, to the wall. It's a grand slam. Howie Kendrick has done it. In the first ALDS series, the Yankees swept the Twins with ease. In the second ALDS series, the Astros beat the Rays in five games, advancing to go play the Yankees in the ALCS. First. And that's driven deep to left center field, racing back here by looking up. See you later! See you later! Back to back Jack! In the NLCS, the Nationals swept the Cardinals to advance to the World Series. In game four, Patrick Corbin pitched five innings with 12 strikeouts. 95 mile an hour cast. Two up, two down. In the NLCS, the Yankees played the Astros. The Astros sadly took the series in six games when Jose Altuve hit a walk-off home run to send his team to the World Series. That's driven deep to left center field. Gardner is going back. Looking up. See you later. See you later. Astros headed back to the World Series. Tonight is the third game of the World Series. We don't know what's happened yet, but I'm sure it's been a thrilling matchup. I'll be watching the series from my couch, just like my team. Good night. And go, go Yankees. Yankees.
That's it for episode three of the Rise Centennial. Next week, the Loft returns with our Halloween episode. Spooky. I'm Summer. And I'm Ellery, reminding you to elevate. elevate.